Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Jackie Armstrong Hominick, the MLA for Fort Saskatchewan Vagerville, and the chair of ACWAR, the Advisory Council on Alberta Ukraine Relations. I'm also humbled to be the MLA for the largest Ukrainian population in Alberta and a descendant of the first Ukrainian settlers in Canada. I look forward to a productive discussion today on the current situation in Ukraine. Thank you, Premier Kenny, for all your support for Ukraine and the Ukrainian people, both now and in your previous federal ministerial rows. I would also like to recognize former Premier Ed Stelmack and Arisia Boychuk, uh, President of the UCC Alberta Chapter, for, and thank you for all your tireless contributions to the Ukrainian community. I have a warm welcome for uh, Alexander Danilenko, Council General of Ukraine in Edmonton, who will be providing us an update on the situation in Ukraine. I will now turn the podium over to Alexander Danilenko. Thank you, Jackie. Honorable Premier Kenny, Ministers, MLAs, dear Ukrainian Canadians, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank you for your initiative of organizing this roundtable and for giving me this opportunity to, to meet you and to provide you with the latest information on the development of the very scarce situation in Ukraine. Let me start with the reminder that Russian aggression started not with the latest violent actions of Mr. Putin. It started eight years ago with the occupation of Ukrainian Crimea and the in initiation and incitement of the bloody conflict in eastern Ukraine. These eight years of Russian aggression cost us huge price. We lost billions of dollars due to the occupations and economic decline caused by Russian actions. We lost about 7% of our territory. But most, what, uh, what the most painful thing is that we lost about 15,000 lives of Ukrainians. About 40,000 people were wounded. Our country will experience consequences of this conflict for decades. This unbearable pain and unmeasurable humanitarian price for us Ukrainians and for all normal people. But it's not for Mr. Putin. He is ready to put millions of lives of innocent people in danger just for the, his imperial ambitions to renew Russian Empire, to destroy our country as a state. He wants to erase the 42 million people nation from the world map. Unbelievable. If you think this is a strong warning, listen to his latest interview where he denies our very right to exist as a nation, as a state. And he thinks that these uh, maniacal goals justifies any methods and any price. You probably know the latest development of the situation. This situation development is very fast. And what I was going to say yesterday, it's obsolete today. And the situation is getting worse, worse, and worse. And, uh, and right now it's very critical. They concentrated, I'm in Russia, they concentrated about 150,000 uh, troops at the border of Ukraine with the heavy weapons, with the mobile hospitals, with the blood banks, and they call it uh, ex uh, military exercises. If you do the regular routine exercises, you don't uh, prepare the hospitals, you don't uh, prepare the b uh, blood uh, banks uh, at these uh, uh, locations. So, what I what would like to say, that they are ready to begin bloody, unprovoked, and unjustified war. Unbelievable. We are talking about this in the 21st century. Unfortunately, Ukraine is in the security vacuum today. We are not member of any defensive alliance. Russia ignores all the treaties they signed all obligations they took. It's very sad and frightening that in the 21st century, one country can unjustifiably and unlawfully terrorize another one 
without fear of serious consequences. The, the president of the UN Security Council member state can say that democratic country in the center of Europe with a population of 42 million people and thousand years long history doesn't even have the right to exist. It's not, if it's not madness, I don't know how to call it. If you don't stop Russia now, it will undermine the whole system of world security and stability. Putin is now testing the world for weakness. He will go as far as we let him. So what can stop him? Quick, coordinated and strong response from the international society. We understand that no country will send its troops to fight in Ukraine, in Ukraine and for Ukraine. We understand that we should fight for our freedom ourselves, and we are ready to do that. But let us remember that this fight is not only for Ukraine. This fight is for the security and stability in Europe, for the justice and democratic values in the whole world. So Ukraine urgently need quick and effective assistance and coordinated actions from our friends and partners in four main directions. First, strong and coordinated economic sanctions on Russia. Second, we urgently need modern weapons and military equipment. I want to underline defensive weapons. We are not going to attack any country, any neighbors. We just want to defend our country. We want to live peacefully on our land. And third, we need effective economic support. Russia do everything possible to destroy our economy, to make war in Ukraine without war, to make everything possible just to stop our economy working. So we just asking our partners to start, we, we are not talking only about some economic grants uh, or credits. We are talking about starting some kind of long-term programs, projects to support to uh, our economy to let uh, it survive in these circumstances. And uh, last but not least, humanitarian assistance. It's a crucial matter for Ukraine and Ukrainian people. I already gave you some figures. We have tens of thousands wounded people, hundreds of thousands military men who returned from the war and have urgent need for physical and mental rehabilitation. We have millions of displaced people who also need humanitarian help. As the UN Office for Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs estimates, 2.9 million people in Ukraine will need humanitarian support in 2022. And all this only for if Putin abandons his insane planes. If not, the number of such people will increase many times. So humanitarian aid is vital matter for our country today. And concluding my remarks, I would like to thank you all again for the strong and continuous support for Ukraine, and we feel it every day. Uh, Canada on the federal level already provided us a very substantial and uh, very valuable support, economic support, military support, sent us uh, defensive equipment. And with understanding that the sanctions and the military assistance are the matter of the federal government, I would like to appeal to the provincial government, to the Ukrainian community here in Alberta, to provide us with any kind of assistance that is in your capacity to help our country and our people in this critical time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander. And now, um, Premier Kenny, if I could have you come up to the podium. Thank you, Jacquio Dobreden. Thank you, uh, MLA Armstrong Hamanyuk, for your chairmanship of the Alberta Ukrainian Advisory Committee. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for that passionate and timely uh, update on the critical situation facing Ukraine. Thank you, former Premier Stelmak and ministers, MLAs, members and leaders of the Ukrainian Canadian community uh, here in Alberta. 
we wanted to convene this meeting to get a real-time update on the crisis facing Ukraine and its territorial integrity, its sovereignty. Uh, Alberta, of course, has a special pl uh, place in its heart for Ukraine and the Ukrainian people, having benefited from hundreds of thousands of Albertans of Ukrainian origin uh, who helped to build this province, creating deep and abiding ties, human and emotional, but also uh, real and, and, and active ties with, between Alberta and Ukraine. And so it, we are deeply concerned and share your disbelief at the situation unfolding as a result of Vladimir Putin's aggression. Uh, it is no secret that Ukraine has suffered uh, from uh, decades and centuries of efforts at russification, at the denial of the existence of the unique Ukrainian language and culture uh, and its national aspirations. And of course, for seven decades of the last century, lived under uh, Soviet occupation, uh, lived through one of the greatest crimes in all of human history, the Holodomor, which was motivated by Moscow's desire to crush the Ukrainian nation, uh, the Ukrainian peasant farmer class, and 10 million people were victims in that one of the greatest crimes of human history. Canadians need to understand that Vladimir Putin and his henchmen in Moscow have always regarded Ukraine as merely a province of Russia, as what they call Little Russia. And the very existence of a modern democratic sovereign uh, Ukraine is something of a miracle of history, something that we all as human beings have a responsibility to defend and protect. Because as the Consul General said, if Vladimir Putin succeeds in his effort uh, to invade and crush Ukraine, where does he end? If the democratic world will not come together with strength uh, to uh, uh, stop this Russian aggression, where and when does it end? We are standing on the precipice of what could become uh, the single largest act of military aggression and armed conflict in Europe since 1945. And so I know there are many here in Alberta and in Canada who think that we could, this is some distant conflict in which we have no interest and which uh, we should ignore. That would be a terrible mistake because uh, it, aggression invites more aggression. And destabilization of the world order is what Vladimir Putin has always benefited from. So, Your Excellency, please understand that the, the government, and I believe the uh, people of Alberta, stand in solidarity uh, with uh, Ukraine and the people of Ukraine at this moment of great challenge. Uh, we should recall that uh, Canada was the first Western country to recognize Ukraine's independence following the referendum uh, in 1992 when Prime Minister Harper, sorry, part, pardon me, Prime Minister Mulroney was the first to recognize that independence. And Ukraine was given uh, security guarantees by the NATO member states at the Budapest Accord with the denuclearization of uh, Ukraine that the West would be there to protect Ukraine from any potential invasion. That was the condition of Ukrainian uh, denuclearization. And Ukraine has every right to remind the Western world of that. Uh, as Canada's Minister of National Defense I deployed the Canadian Armed Forces to Ukraine for the first time ever in Operation Unifier to help to train and better prepare Ukrainian troops for uh, Russian aggression. And for seven years, as a result of that operation, thousands and thousands of Ukra Ukrainian soldiers, officers, enlisted men have received world-class training in an important reform and westernization of Ukrainian military tactics. Uh, I also deployed large amounts of uh, military equipment to Ukraine and provided critical high-resolution real-time radar satellite imagery that was helpful, President Poroshenko told me, uh, in defensive uh, tactics during incursions by Russian-backed uh, terrorists and separatists in Luhansk and Donetsk. But now Canada has to step up in a bigger way, given the more obvious and violent aggression. Uh, and so I uh, call on the government of Canada to spare no effort in providing all necessary uh, 
military uh, equipment, uh, humanitarian support, and also the strongest possible sanctions. Uh, let me say that there is a dimension of Putin's aggression which has a real relevance to Alberta, and that is around energy security. Uh, Russia has the world's third largest proven and probable oil reserves. Alberta has the world's third largest proven and probable reserves. And so let me speak very bluntly to our friends and partners in the United States. President Biden, a year ago, arbitrarily and retroactively, retroactively vetoed the Keystone XL pipeline that would have delivered over 800,000 barrels a day of responsibly produced oil to, to help fuel the American economy. Today, the United States imports over 800,000 barrels a day of oil from Vladimir Putin's Russia, uh, enriching the Russian Treasury to finance Putin's aggression. This makes no sense as a matter of national security of, or of energy security. And so I call on Prime Minister Trudeau to pick up the phone and call the president and say it is time to move away from uh, consuming, from financing Russian aggression through these massive energy imports. Canada can be the solution to that. That may not be an immediate solution to the current prospective invasion, but we need to play a long game just as Vladimir Putin has over the past decade since his invasion of Crimea and eastern Ukraine. So uh, the, uh, Alberta can play a critical role in displacing Russian oil and energy exports, which are the basis of the wealth of Putin's state, which finances his military aggression. And we are uh, eager and willing to work with the U.S. administration uh, to play that role, to, to provide, to be a secure, democratic source of critical energy that can help the world turn away from its growing dependence, including Europe, the lifting of sanctions on Nord Stream 2, yet another sign of weakness that will put Western Europe under even greater Russian influence at the worst possible time, while also hurting Ukraine's energy security and future economy. Uh, finally, let me say that while the government of Alberta doesn't have a military or an international development program, we do feel strongly that we uh, want to show sign of solidarity uh, to the people of Ukraine at this time. So I'm pleased to announce that Alberta's government is providing a, a million dollars in funding to the Ukrainian Canadian Foundation to support humanitarian relief efforts. And Your, Your, Your Excellency, uh, I, I'm eager to sit down with you and to see if there's other practical ways in which we can provide uh, practical assistance in addition to our strongest possible uh, moral support. So with that, uh, thank you, and I now look forward to hearing from my predecessor, uh, a great Alberta, of, Albertan of Ukrainian origin, uh, the Honorable Ed Stelmak. Uh, Slava Ukraini. <clears throat> well, it's pretty difficult to follow that because you kind of knocked all of us back with the size of the support for the humanitarian uh, aid <clears throat> this morning. And I get these uh, updates uh, every day uh, from the Ukrainian Canadian Congress uh, National. Um, and as you said, the war is far from Alberta and we're comfortable here other than the weather. But, um, and I was looking at it and the soldier killed yesterday happened to be Alexander Steinmach. So, of course, the calls <laughs> coming home, any relative? No, uh, no relative, but it, it was just a hit home, uh, you know, to see the same name. Uh, Premier, ministers, uh, honorary council, uh, all members of the Ukrainian community, and those that have came to join uh, this uh, particular roundtable in the announcement. I want to thank you wholeheartedly, uh, uh, Premier, for taking this leadership ro role, not only your exp experience as a former Minister of Defense and member of the uh, Federal Cabinet 
and knowing the Ukraine situation uh, quite well, dating back a number of years ago. But clearly, this sets a target that other provinces can work towards because the humanitarian aid is, uh, will keep in increasing. And uh, our goal from the Ukrainian Canadian Congress, and uh, Orisha will give more information following me, is one, to create a, an awareness campaign. Why should you, as an Albertan, be concerned and support the humanitarian aid and support other sanctions against uh, uh, Putin? The, uh, the number of disabled, the number of people that are living in a zone that have lost their pension, most of these are female-headed uh, homes and houses that they're in that area that is neither Ukraine nor Russia. Uh, also, the number of younger women, single girls, that uh, are exposed to human trafficking. These are all serious matters, humanitarian. And uh, that doesn't uh, talk about the number of disabled that also uh, need the support and the number of refugees. So A, we want to create an awareness campaign uh, so that we communicate this right across Alberta to every community and ask for support. Second is uh, talk about the humanitarian aid, how, what's the best way of getting money into the hands of those that need it most without losing it to uh, bureau bureaucracies. And the third, and we don't know how deep this invasion will go, is how do we prepare for what may be a number of refugees looking for a new home? How can we integrate them into Alberta society? Because there are already, as Alexander said, a number of displaced people looking for homes. And uh, we've done it in the past. We've done it uh, at the end of martial law in Poland. We opened up uh, Alberta. We did it for Bosnia. Uh, a number of years ago, uh, we have the organizations. It's just a matter of putting it all together and prepare, because it's not going to get any better. And, uh, uh, and of course, you know, because you know, tied to Ukraine as a, as a, as a descendant of, of uh, uh, grandparents that arrived here as serfs um, over 120 years ago. But it, it just you can't watch and see someone inflict this pain, needless pain, treachery, just on, on populations that have nothing to do. They're not aggressive. They're, they're peace-loving people wanting to enjoy independence and, and a civil society. So I appeal to everyone today uh, for, for your support. And once again, thank you. I... Uh, it's, uh, I, I, I can tell you when we were talking about this at the table, we didn't think that uh, we would get uh, such uh, incredible support. Thank you, Premier. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Premiers. I'm in the best spot in the world between the two greatest Premiers around. <laughs> Um, next, I'll call on Urisia Boychuk uh, to give a small presentation. Thank you, Honorable Premier. Thank you very, very much. Um, on behalf of the Ukrainian Canadian Congress, Alberta Provincial Council, we are deeply, deeply honored to, to be here and to be part of this announcement and hearing that you have contributed a million dollars towards humanitarian aid to Ukraine. This is an incredible gift. It definitely has superseded all of our expectations and uh, today and we're very grateful for this part of the presentation. Um, Ukrainian Canadian Congress, Alberta Provincial Council had established a Alberta Stands with Ukraine campaign uh, a few weeks ago and a committee of, of leaders came together um, and have been meeting and uh, one of our priorities the number one priorities is to support Canada Ukraine Foundation and to 
support the humanitarian aid in Ukraine. So this truly is a, uh, a great step. Um, it's a great step forward for us in Alberta, and uh, we should be very proud of this. Our, our priority also um, is, as um, Premier Stelmach had uh, indicated, is an information awareness uh, campaign to help inform and uh, create an Alberta-centric uh, information uh, place where people can come and be informed. Um, we've developed a speakers bureau, we've developed a website and uh, where we're providing the latest and most up-to-date information where people can become, can learn and become informed. It's extremely important for Albertans to understand the real facts. Um, as you know, the uh, there's, there is a disinformation war going on with, uh, with Putin and we, we need to be present and we need to share that information. And our contribution to help Albertans is to provide this center, this support of information. And we're very excited about the, the group of people that have come forward. Uh, we know that uh, we are part of many ethnic groups there are Eastern Europeans, many Eastern U Europeans here. Ukrainians are one of 350,000 here in Alberta, but there are Polish and Jewish and other ethnic groups um, that reside here. And as you've indicated, when we are just the front line where the battle of democracy is beginning, and we need to make sure that people understand that this may not end at Ukraine. And our committee is positioned to help inform Albertans from an Alberta perspective and to educate others to help inform them about the current situation and the aggression on Ukraine. Again, I want to thank you very much for your support. We are very deeply honoured. Well, that concludes our formal portion of the program this evening. I want to thank you all for coming. Uh, for our guests, um, uh, I'll ask that uh, Heather and Jared direct people into the Windsor Room and um, while media is finishing up here. Thank you. <laughs>